So, what's wrong with the class website? Well, a lot actually. But before we talk about what's wrong with it, let's talk about a few things that are good about it. It's built on the Google Slides platform. You can see that here in the URL. And that means it's free. And free is good because I'm cheap. But free has a cost associated with it. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But let me just show you how easy it is to change this website. Google knows I'm the author of this website because I'm logged in as myself on my Google account. And you can see this little pencil up here. All I have to do to change this website is just click on this and it switches to editing mode. And I can make whatever changes I want here and then just hit the save button. And instantly the changes show up. All this stuff resides on Google servers. And that has some advantages and disadvantages, which we're going to talk about. But overall, uh, as a starting website, it was, uh, it, it was very good. Unfortunately, I think we, we've kind of outgrown it a little bit for the reasons that I'll describe. OK, so uh, before we talk about what the challenges are, let me just tell you what the, uh, the design strategy was for this website. We have basically two competing goals with this website. First, we want to provide a marketing engine to try to draw students at West Hill into taking more computer science classes. In particular, we want more women and minorities represented because they are a highly uh, underrepresented group inside computer science right now. Uh, so this basically is a huge advertisement uh, for the students, and our goal is to try and get them to take more classes. Okay, but there's another competing goal. We also want to be able to provide information to students who come to this website looking for a specific piece of information. For example, imagine a student has already uh, signed up for one of my courses, but wants to know what their summer assignment is. So they can either click over here, or they can click over here. All right, uh, so uh, those are the two competing goals. Now, when you have a website design or any design which has more than one goal, there are going to be some compromises. And I had to make some compromises designing this website. Okay, now we're going to start talking a little bit about all the limitations of having the website built on the Google sites. The biggest by far is that Google has a large number of security constraints. Keep in mind that all this stuff runs on their server. They're constantly worried about somebody uh, putting malware on their server. So uh, they have all kinds of restrictions of what you can and cannot do on their websites. That's created some additional problems because when we want to try and insert a widget like this, we have to jump through a lot of hoops in order to do that. In fact, this kind of thing was not allowed previously, uh, and there were a lot of complaints by the Google users. So Google came around to uh, providing sort of a compromise. So if you want to put in your custom code in here like this, they'll let you do it in some cases. There's still some restrictions, but far fewer. But you have to wrap it around an XML wrapper. OK, the XML wrapper. Uh, is a pain because now if I wanted to change this widget right here, you can see if I click on this, uh, it brings me to this HTML box. And then if I go to the HTML box, you can see I have to uh, take it in here. And then if I want to edit it uh, and see how it's working, it, it doesn't work as well as the rest of the website. Uh, the other big problem with the HTML wrapper, and I'm going to show you this by uh, reloading the website here. Um, let's see, I'm going to reload it. Now look how long it takes uh, for the website to load. Okay, and uh, you saw all that uh, un unformatted content showing up temporarily. Uh, so these are just some of the issues that you get into uh, with uh, Google Sites. If, if this stuff is all built custom, the site will load faster, and there won't be any of these security restrictions. Right? So that's uh, one main issue with, uh, with Google. All right. The other big issue, and this is probably one of the largest issues I have with the website, and let me just uh, go ahead and open up a Safari browser. And while I'm opening this, I want you to imagine that this is a Mac computer running Safari. And uh, right here, it's set to my uh, website as my home page. Now, <clears throat> look what's going to happen over here as this website eventually loads. OK, you see that widget that we had seen before with all the purple buttons around it? Notice that it does not display properly on a Safari browser. Okay, that is because Google Sites does not work well on Apple uh, Safari browsers. Okay, so what that means is that anything, anything I try to do that's even a little bit fancy is not going to show up properly on anyone that has an Apple computer at home and is looking at my website. Okay, that's a huge problem, and it's not going to get fixed uh, anytime soon because Google and Apple are mortal enemies out there in the business world. So we need to have a website that works not just on Windows, but also on uh, Apple machines as well. Okay, now recall earlier I said that there were some compromises that had to be made when this website was designed. 
My original idea behind this little gizmo was to have this button be uh, sort of located up here, maybe perhaps along with some other buttons, and that this uh, gray space that you see here all collapsed so that this figure was further up and uh, all that would show here would be all the advertisements to try to get kids to take the class and if a student wanted more information there would be these buttons up here and then when they press one of the buttons like this these other buttons would show up and then they could click on whatever they wanted to get more information so the, the basic idea again was mostly marketing information on the first page and with a few uh, non discrete buttons and if you basically hit one of the buttons it would reconfigure the page to be more informational and less uh, advertisement uh, ish uh, as you can see this didn't work for example if I was to collapse this button all this gray space still remains and, and the reason this happens is once again because this had to be wrapped with an XML wrapper now we're going to talk about a few problems that the website has uh, that don't, don't really have anything to do with Google per se let's take a look at this video carousel that's here for example and I can uh, click through here. Uh, if I don't click through it, it, uh, it, it goes through by itself periodically and, and changes the image. Now, this particular carousel is provided for free uh, by a company called Power.io. I don't know if you can see this little thing flashing on the bottom. This is a small piece of advertising that I am required to provide in order to use this feature. And this advertising annoys me. The only way to make it go away is to pay Power.io for use of this carousel. Okay, the other problem with using uh, these plugins from Power.io is that this stuff is constantly being uh, serviced by their, by their servers. So when Power.io servers go down, uh, my website goes down. And that's a completely unacceptable situation. So what I want to do, uh, one of the things I want to do when we go custom on this website is I want to bring these carousels all in-house and have the carousel embedded directly in my website with custom code and uh, not have to use any third-party software like this to display uh, this type of thing. Now let me show you one other example of a Power.io uh, plugin that I used here and this goes under uh, examples of uh, student work. I clicked on the wrong thing. Okay, so here uh, in one of my classes the students do projects and I have a list of all their projects here, little videos on each one and down here there's some QR codes. Now notice over here by the way once again I'm being forced to provide some advertising for Power.io there's a similar thing over here uh, and that's annoying and um, once again when Power.io's website is down none of this stuff works plus this is not really a good format I would prefer to have some other kind of carousel um, and the other thing is you notice that the uh, descriptions of the apps are up here and the QR codes are down here and what I would really prefer is to have the app and the QR code for each item uh, side by side somehow presented in the carousel so there, there's some opportunities here to be creative and build something uh, really nice that perhaps we can use year after year my goal is to have this type of a uh, uh, display for each year's uh, apps so it's something I'm gonna need to reuse uh, over and over again every year uh, so I would like to build something nice there okay one last thing I want to show you here is uh, if you're an AP student you probably have not seen this this is my wheel of justice I, I use it more in my uh, freshman classes when uh, students misbehave uh, they click on this and they get to pick their own punishment uh, this is provided currently uh, by a third party and um, I would like to bring a uh, build a version of this uh, so that uh, I can basically own it and once again not be uh, beholden to this class tools.net. This particular uh, part of it is a very low priority item for this internship, but will probably be one of the most fun parts uh, of the design. So let's talk for a couple of minutes about how to best prepare. Uh, for this internship. This internship is going to take place once again during the last week of July and most of August and the only thing you need to do to get ready for it is to make yourself familiar with Adobe uh, Dreamweaver and Adobe Dreamweaver is the tool that I have decided to use to build our website. It is by far the most common uh, popular tool for building websites custom and uh, the only real problem with it is that it's very expensive so you can't just go out there and buy uh, Dreamweaver Creative Cloud uh, as an individual you'd end up having to pay like five six hundred dollars a year every year for this thing and that's not reasonable now and the good news is that uh, West Hill has a license for this uh, so we are going to be able to have it on a few of our machines in the lab 
uh, but I can't let you uh, I can't let you install it on your home computer or on your laptop or anything like that. We don't have that kind of license, okay? So uh, you need to make yourself uh, familiar with Dreamweaver, and there are a couple of ways to do this. Uh, the best way is to go on YouTube and look at some videos on Dreamweaver, look at some tutorials that show you how to use it. Uh, and secondly, if you have a, a relative or a friend who has an older version of Dreamweaver, by all means see if you can borrow it from them. And even if it's not the most recent version, that's fine. Uh, just try to get yourself to become familiar with Dreamweaver. And the more familiar you are with this tool, uh, then the better you'll be able to hit the ground running uh, as soon as you uh, walk into the internship here in the, in the first uh, last week of uh, July and uh, start working on the uh, on, on the website. The uh, one other tool I want to mention, which you might want to become a little bit familiar with before coming into school, is FileZilla. FileZilla is a free tool that you can get on the internet and download onto your home computer. And what it does is it provides a FTP transport between uh, the, the the copy of the website that's going to reside on the local machine and the cloud version. So what happens is when you're designing a website, you design it on your computer, and you get it working on your computer first. And then when you're happy with it, uh, you press a few buttons, and then the uh, the files from your computer get transferred onto the uh, web server where they're going to be uh, sitting on the cloud, so that your website can then be uh, updated and made available to anybody uh, that has internet access. Okay, so you need some sort of a tool uh, to move the files back and forth between the computer and the cloud and the cloud and the computer and FileZilla is one of the most popular free tools out there and that's the one we're going to use. Okay, So uh, Dreamweaver uh, which is, should be about 90 percent of your effort and FileZilla which is a much easier tool and it's free about 10 percent of your effort and that's really all you need to do to get ready uh, for this internship.